Welcome back to ESA Summer Online. We just watched Recalled snag a, a pretty nice PB in uh, Ninja Combat. Like 51 seconds, I think it was. Plenty of nice PBs today and even a world record in uh, from uh, Frosty Flygon. Or Frozen Flygon, I don't even know. That's pretty embarrassing. But uh, yeah, we are raising money for Alzheimer Funden. Links to... Don donating for this amazing cause can be found below the stream and uh, we would like to thank Kaspersky, Twitch and ViewSonic for sponsoring this event as well. Now it's time for Neviot to show off a little bit of Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Take it away. Hi guys, uh, it's me, I'm Neviot. Um, I'll be running Crystal Chronicles today and uh, with me I have Romulus as my co-commentator. Hey everyone, I'm Romy Was. I've also done runs of this game. Yep, he currently has the world record, um, which is uh, pretty impressive because a lot of his game is RNG. So there's uh, one thing I want to say ahead of time before we start. Um, for the beginning of the game, I'll be uh, playing in multiplayer, so I'll have to use a GBA with a GameCube connector cable. Um, and that will be irrelevant for the first uh, 10 to 12 minutes of the game. So, um, I guess we'll just... Oh, actually, I'll need to know the name of the character for the, from the donation incentive. Uh, sometime during the opening cutscene. So, for now, I'm just going to count down, and then I guess we'll get into this. So, five, four, three, two, one, go. So, yeah, um, game starts with a pretty long... For most people, consider it pretty long. Uh, opening cutscene, it's about three minutes, and uh, after that, we're gonna make our character. So by then, I'll need the name. But yeah, so Romulus, uh, you wanna explain a little bit about what this game is about? Well, the game is about saving basically your village because you have to go every year to three dungeons to collect mir which is like some water that creates a barrier for a, using a crystal to prevent the miasma from killing everyone so it basically works as um as like a protection caravan. circle yeah and you have a small crystal, and you take your caravan. And since he's using uh, multiplayer at the start, you have to carry the chalice around. But eventually, he will change to single player, and you have Mog. So it will be a lot easier to walk around. Although Mog can also get tired, depending on the environment of the dungeon and how uh, how much fur he has. So it's basically that, and the bad part about, about this game is the RNG, because when he moves around <laughs> in the overworld, <laughs> there's a chance that you might get a random encounter, and some of them are actually fairly fast, but some of them are really long, about one minute. And yes. there are some other effects, like there are one encounter that Nev has to be aware of, which is... Uh, one that's kind of useless because you don't even get a memory out of it and there's a chance that the guys might steal your stuff so he's going to have to do a few extra things that's normally not done in the actual speedrun just to prevent from messing things up for later yes pretty much but yeah basically the TLDR of the plot is a uh, big big parasite comes to this world, pollutes the air with miasma, we gotta save the world by slaying it. And we're gonna do that by, uh, by going on a journey. So yeah, the other thing is, as you might see in the opening, uh, there's a couple of different races in this game. Um, we'll be playing Selkie, because objectively speaking, Selkie is the best race in this game, for any percent. Um, which is partially related to the fact that their defendability is incredibly good. 
um, because it basically gives you invincibility frames throughout a lot of abilities, and that um, basically makes it so you don't die from specific things and just lets you kill stuff faster that way, instead of having to dodge it. Yeah, another thing is you have one extra strength point compared to other races, which is going to be helpful at the start. Because yes. the way the stats work for this game is you need to reach a multiple of 5 for it to uh, increase your actual damage and defense and whatnot. So yes. at, at the start, uh, Selkie starts with uh, 22 and yep. he's going to get an artifact that's going to give him... No, actually it's 20. No, it's 22, yeah. Yeah, you started when you. All right, uh, I'll need the name now. Whoever has the name for me, what's the name? The name is gonna be Zwanzig. All right, I you figured as much. Uh, yes. All right, so whopping... yes, uh, oh, you won't. Wow. Sorry, sorry, you won't see the character creation because I actually have to do it on the GBA, but it will pop up in a couple seconds here. Well, let's hope I didn't misspell Zwanzig's name. He would be really not proud of me. All right, there we go. Ah, uh, sorry, go on. <laughs> I just wanted to say that uh, Zwanzig won with a whopping two ninety or oh, $290. So that is amazing. Thank you, it's, it's everybody bad. who donated. Yeah, thanks, everybody. And shoutouts to Mr. Zwanzig. Really cool guy, speedruns of the Final Fantasy games. Yeah, so unfortunately at the start, you won't be able to see all the menuing because he's using... Yes. The GBA, uh, but he also here. selected uh, your Mer family's job is going to be merchant, so he can buy yes. uh, meat later. It is important because it's faster than uh, picking farmer, or no, not farmer. Um, whatever it is this that gives you meat on a yearly basis, because meat Stranger. also gives you yeah, meat also gives you strength in this game for, I think it's five minutes. I'm not entirely sure how long it really is. All right, uh, we're going to skip the tutorial minutes. here. Yeah, it's five minutes, but uh, I was told that whenever you go through a loading zone, it kind of decreases the time uh, even more for some reason. It's why it's he's possible. playing on Japanese. There are two reasons. One is the infinite guild glitch that's going to do shortly. Yes. And the other one is the strength buff. Actually, every buff will last when you go through a loading zone, whereas the English version and European version, you just can use the buff for the area you are at at the moment. All right. We're actually going to pick up this Phoenix down because of marathon safety. So when, uh, as you can see at the top left underneath my, uh, my character name, there is uh, four circles. Those are the command slots. That's basically how you do stuff. Um, attack. Uh, whoops. Attack and defend are there by default, and you have two empty ones when you start the game that you can equip uh, items to or whatever you might have. So picking up the Phoenix down makes it so that if I die, if I have the Phoenix down equipped, that will be automatically revived, which is uh, pretty important sometimes. So did that a little slow and that... That goblin gave me an artifact, which I'm going to pick up, which is going to increase my strength to 23. Which means that as soon as I'm going to use a meat or a fish at the end of this dungeon, I will reach 25 and be able to deal more damage right away. Yeah, one thing worth noting is you can only get uh, the artifact once with your character, so you kind of have to rely on getting the correct artifact so you can get the most strength at the end. Right there he got, I think it was double X. Yeah, it was a double X. Normally, yeah, you would normally get it later, so he has to drop a uh, green beret for the next dungeon, or at least try to get it on the third one, run on one enemy that we normally don't kill. Yeah. All right, Um, I went into the menu there, used the meat, it would normally heal me, but since I was already full HP, it didn't matter. So now we're gonna smack this crap until it falls over. So it is the defend thing I was talking about. It would just let me basically tank its hit 
while defending. So as for the regular attacks, there is um, combo hits in this game. As you can see, I keep hitting three times at once. Oh, this is really bad. Uh, I need to That's actually, yeah, cute. I need to actually move this. Oops. Sometimes the crab just pushes the Chavis away and goes to hug the wall. Yes. That was not optimal, but not terrible. The crab was a little bit of uh, bad RNG. So after every boss, uh, you'll get this uh, cutscene where you collect your drop of mirror. Since I'm still in multiplayer, I can menu while I'm in here, which is pretty convenient. Uh, so I equipped the fish on one of my command slots so I can use it later on. And um, you get a letter from your family after you beat every boss. Um, you can normally respond to them, but obviously that's slow. So we're not doing that and we don't get anything from it. So um, I'll just pick any of the any of the orange artifacts or strength artifacts. The green ones are defense and the purple ones are magic. So we pretty much always only collect strength except for once in this entire run. And that is simply because we can select strength. Oh, twice, actually. Once is a heart for extra HP, and once is a defense one, simply because we have no choice but to pick it. That is assuming I will get a green beret in the next dungeon. Otherwise, I might be screwed and I'll have to pick two defense ones. Alright, so we changed the element of the chalice because whenever you need whenever you go through these miasma streams, you need to have the the fitting element for your chalice, otherwise you just get pushed back again. So this one required water. So that's why I had to switch it to water at the dungeon. I could have done it in the dungeon, but it is faster to just do it afterwards because then you can just select it. Alright, so now, the next part of this uh, of this area, we're going to perform the infinite guild glitch once we're in town. And uh, Rom will be hopefully be able to explain it in a way that makes sense if you've never played this game. Because it is a pretty silly glitch, alright. <laughs> so, the most basic way that I can explain this glitch is the game gets confused, but... The reason is, he opens the letter menu, so it kind of freezes the guild count, but you can, since he's on the GBA, he can still uh, close the menu and open the guild menu. And since the guild count is frozen, he can just keep dropping it. So, as you see, he's dropping it five times, and he's getting all the money again, opening the letter menu and repeating the process. So, that way he can make a lot of money and he's getting extra because he's going to buy some stuff in case he gets the encounter where the uh, NPCs steal stuff from you. So right here he's going to buy uh, two Mithrils, uh, if I'm not mistaken, four two four. alloys. Four. I bought four. Okay. One is for safety and three you actually need. I bought three alloys, yeah. one is for safety, I bought one iron which uh, I needed for the weapon that I made, and then I bought the recipes for the armor and the secondary, uh, the secondary armor piece, which is a belt for uh, Selkies. Yeah, basically he gets really strong, really early in the game. Right now he has a warrior's weapon, but he's going to try to get a master's weapon later, which could be like bad because he has to rely on RNG. To drop the actual uh, scroll to craft the weapon. So let's see how it goes. There are some backups later, but the earlier you get, uh, the better. So now he's going back to single player since he has done the Infinite Guild glitch, which only works on the Japanese multiplayer version. Yes. So we save the game and just go back to multiplayer. Now I have an actual controller, so I have more than eight way of uh, directions. Which is great. 
there's also one thing worth noting. Uh, at the end of the first dungeon, there was one... Before he got the artifact, you saw that he got eight, 28 points. And the game has this, this bonus thing going on that you can only see on the GBA. Like stuff, don't use magic, don't use focus charge attacks, don't grab items, stuff like that. And depending on the amount of points he has at the end, uh, you can actually get a different artifact. So it could be it could be helpful for some dungeons, but it's not really used besides the first one. Yeah, there's basically just different tiers of uh, artifact sets that you can get at the end, depending on your points. And even if you reach a certain amount of points, you're still not guaranteed to get the one that you're looking for. So that's the other yeah, thing. Yeah, it's like based. All right, Green Beret. Green Beret, I believe. Uh... Oh, screw this game. It's, it's even a shuriken, shuriken so I can't it's, even grab it. It's really him. bad because he got shuriken for the first dungeon and now he will be forced to get the yeah. uh, defense artifact. Or is it available the heart already? Or is it only the third dungeon? Uh, I think the heart is available. I'm not sure if I should get it though. I might just I might just go for the 45 defense in that case. But yeah, so. Um, Dungeons are pretty straightforward now. We just run through everything and then, um, yeah, we just go to the boss more or less. So I'm only gonna destroy this left plant here. Then I'm gonna use a fish to get back up to 35 strength. Which, if you remembered earlier what Rom said, I started with 22. And the weapon gave me a nice little boost. And due to the armor, I can just face tank more or less everything, but. I'm dropping really low, so I'm just gonna heal here. Could have probably done it without. It's not that big of a deal. I have to equip it at some point, anyways, so I might as well do it now. So, yeah, um, second boss dead. Pretty straightforward. We just smack his head until he dies. And we get um, another letter from our family. A GBA, like when I was playing in multiplayer, you didn't see this menu because it appears on the GBA and time doesn't freeze. There's actually a lot of things where time doesn't freeze on GBA, which is uh, technically good, but since uh, it's not very helpful. Okay, I'm getting dependent. And then yeah, I'll... It's better to get it now and hope for a green beret for the next dungeon. Yeah. Makes sense. Alright, so... I'm just gonna head to the third dungeon of the year. And, um, as explained earlier, whenever you collect three drops of Mir, um, your year will end and then you spawn back at the village. And then we continue. Our goal is to get to year 5 ASAP, because that's when you can earliest finish the game. Also, I'm getting an extra Phoenix down here again. Normally, I wouldn't get the majority of these phoenix downs. But since I just want to be safe for the marathon, I am getting a couple extras. I'll probably, assuming I don't die anywhere randomly, outside of the places where I more or less plan to die, I'll probably have like six or seven left at the end. Which is a pretty good amount, I think. Alright, so we're gonna activate these switches to be able to, for the uh, for the minecart to be able to oh I forgot the goblin. Yeah, you forgot the yeah. Alright, well too late. We're getting the fence here. Alright. Kill this one to get the switch. He gives us a magic artifact, but that is entirely useless for us. I'm gonna kill this next guy here because he also drops a phoenix down. And then I'll already be up to four. These enemies die really quick because of uh, all the strength that I have currently. So. 
Uh, let's hope Mog doesn't get stuck here, because Mog has the tendency to just get stuck at random places for no reason, and without any... You know, yeah, without it making that, any it, sense. Like, he could get stuck here. He can also run away from you. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Just like that. There's, there's no reason why he should ever be doing that. But luckily I have a map on the GBA, so I can still see where I need to go. But yeah, um... That is, um, that is the stupid things that Mark can do for no reason. Right. So hopefully this guy just casts fire over and over, and that is the fastest thing we can get. He can attack us with two different attacks, we don't want to see any of them, we just want to see fire. And I'll just focus attack over and over, which um, it's really good on Silky. Yep, that's not what we wanted to see. Keep casting fire. Alright, uh, when he gets low HP, he's gonna cast his uh, self-destruct move. Which, if you don't kill him fast enough, um, it's just gonna kill you. But I, I think I remember that you can just outrange that, if necessary. But you should have plenty of time to just kill him before that happens. Alright, um... What should you say, Rom? So far, year one wasn't too bad. No green beret, but yeah, 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 you got no encounters, right. and if you get lucky later and manage to get a flame tongue, you can actually try to get a flame tongue from the Griffon in RBP too. It could be helpful. Yeah, I might. I'll think about it. I'll see how the runs go on. Alright, so we can't pick the shuriken, we can't pick the heart, so we have to pick the buckler. Which is unfortunate, but... Alright, everyone's partying at the end of the year. It's almost like New Year's Eve. Alright, so every year the, the elements for the Miasma streams change. They basically just shift one clockwise. So now whenever we want to cross the first one, we'll have to grab fire instead of water like we had before. Alright, um, I'm gonna talk to my dad here. And then I'm gonna buy a lot of uh, meat. I'm gonna buy 37. Normally I would just buy 31. I wanna buy a couple extras, but I can't buy 41 because with all the extra Phoenix Downs that I'm picking up, it's gonna clog up my inventory. Because there is an inventory limit, I don't remember the exact number, but um, if you buy 41, you're pretty close to it. Alright. Next dungeon is the part where most um, actual run attempts die. And there's the first yeah, there random the encounter. First encounter. <laughs> okay, it's not the thieves though, it's not the thieves, you can tell by the music. It's probably gonna be- I don't know. Let's feel the thump. It's not too bad, it's relatively short. The only downside is... If you if you initiate some of these random encounters, um, you can actually start getting the following ones. So there's a higher chance for you to actually get stuff. Oh, yeah. So, Goblin Wall. This is where I will be attempting to get a recipe for the Master's Weapon. Uh, for everybody that can read Japanese, it's gonna be Tatsuji Nobuki. That's what we're looking for. It's gonna be all in hiragana. And I think I'll grab this phoenix down as well. Alright. It's in this chest right here, so we gotta open the cage. And then we're gonna go in. And then it's gonna say Tatsuji Nobuki. Oh, hell yeah! Can we get some pogs in Chad? <laughs> well, that's really <laughs> lucky, but the dungeon has some other problems. Like, before opening the boss door, there are a bunch of enemies in the area, so yes. it could kinda gang up on you and makes. makes things really hard because you have to gr kill an enemy grab a key and place it on the pedestal yes. and the enemy simply won't let him do it hopefully it, he has a bunch of phoenix down so he can just 
uh, do a strat where you die and the enemies will just go back to their original position. We'll see what happens, I guess. It seems it seems fine. Can I jump in with a few donations real quick? Uh, after the boss, if possible. Alright. Oh, oh we got the switch. We got the switch. Alright. Uh, so... There's gonna be two goblins at the start, and then there's gonna be two more that spawn. Uh, these are a little bit annoying to deal with. Also, I need to equip some of my meat and use meat before I run out. So you kind of want to sync them up, which is really difficult if they die in, at different times. But this was pretty decent. So now we're going to make use of... Uh, oh, that's actually annoying. So, never mind. He teleports away. You can make use of the stairs because his only dangerous move is uh, Thundara. And you can dodge the Thundara. Uh, he's up there, right? By simply just going left and right on the stairs. And, and, and hope to get dead. the rewards. Yeah, it's going to optimally. Have to refight the boss later, but uh, it's going to be a lot worse since you'll be doing a melee uh, focus attack, unlike this one. Yes. Whenever we get this new weapon, we're gonna have a different focus attack. If you paid attention to the very first one we had in the beginning, it was just like a single like ball flying at the enemy. Um, this one has two of them, and the third one is basically just gonna be like some jump kick into the boss. Or like into the enemy. Or whatever you're aiming at, rather. But you get the point. So yeah, uh, now is a good time for some uh, for some donations. We'll just pick an artifact here, and then there's gonna be an unskippable event again. All right, we have twenty dollars here from Robo Sparkle. He says, "Nev, can you believe it's been eight years of ESA already? Really looking forward to watching you do another run. Best of luck, and don't let RNG bite you. Less than three. Yo, shoutouts to Robo." One of the one of the OGs from ESA 2012. Pretty cool guy. Indeed. We also have thirty dollars from that man Miyagi, with the comment simply saying "Good luck." Yo, thanks Miyagi. I uh, might have accidentally buffered an input here. You never know with this game. Okay. There we go. Uh, so that encounter right there, it helps to explain the plot. Because at the start of the game, you have no idea what's going on. And you get these fixed encounters. Oh, right here, Nev is trying to do the sign glitch, which kind of messes up your collision, can push the chalice with that. Let's see. Okay, nice. Uh. Uh. I think you I'll got just, it. I'll just pick okay. it up at this point. Uh, this is technically faster, but it's uh, it's very difficult in RTA. I just wanted to do it to show off that um, whenever you whenever you interact with a sign or an NPC outside of the chalice, like and then take damage from the miasma, it's gonna change your collision, and you can suddenly push things really fast. So that's what was happening. Because if you saw. After I picked up the chalice, I was walking really slow. You can kind of do that with um, the keys without taking the damage, but it it's really slow and it stops working after uh, yeah. a while. There's a lot of problems with it. It is it is probably really useful in multiplayer though. Like I think the I think the Japanese players that are. Uh, that have the fastest time currently for multiplayer used it. Uh, so anyway, about the story about the game. Um, for the speedrun, you actually don't get to see the entire thing because you, finish, you try to finish at year 5 and there is this guy, the Black Knight, who has lost his memory and he seems to be invincible and 
spoiler alert, he dies eventually, but we never get to see it. <laughs> so we, we don't really know who the final boss is, because we never get to see this actual encounter. I'm an idiot and actually spilled some of my water. <laughs> Sorry, that was unrelated to it, but uh, I'll just uh, try to clean it up while moving to the thing. Okay, never mind, we get an encounter. That's the thieves. So they're going to try and steal stuff from me, which uh, doesn't really matter. Because I made my weapon, they can't steal the weapon. Um, I bought extra mithril and alloys anyways. So, uh, all's good. This encounter is really useless, because if you notice it, normally you get a message at the end when the screen fades to black. Yes. And this one doesn't even give you a memory. Alright, that's uh, encounter number two, right? Like a random one? Uh, I think it is. Yeah. It's not too bad. So, like, the average... The average... Oh, well, uh, I guess most runners have, like, between... Anywhere between zero and five. Most of the time. And then Mass's weapon is, like, anywhere between first and second. I don't think anybody really continues a good run if they don't get Mass's weapon first or second try. So yeah, um, as you can tell, getting a run going is um, a pain sometimes. Yeah, uh, sometimes you spend six hours trying to get past year one, and you simply can't because you get a bunch of encounters. Oh, I'm just gonna wait for that poison. All right, so right so... there he got fire because it's needed for the second part of the dungeon oh. since he has to burn some webs that are blocking the path. I didn't unequip the meat. Or rather I didn't use it. Normally you would use the meat there and just like automatically get the get the fire into your command slot. But I Kinda did not do that, so I had to equip it manually. Not that big of a deal. So this guy here. He can walk all the way through to the net, but if he casts anything other than Blizzard, it's kind of a problem. Because we have ice on our chalice, or like water rather, that means we can't get frozen. If you have wind, you can't get stunned. Um, if you have fire, you can't get burned, and so on. I think Earth does nothing. Uh, it has something to do with poison. I think you oh, don't get right. poisoned. You might not get poisoned or... It's useless, essentially. Alright, as you can see, focus charge completely different now. A lot stronger, hits twice, pretty good. Moves us around, which uh, is pretty handy to avoid certain attacks as well. Alright, I have to use a meat here. Because I dropped below 40. I'm at 39, but it technically doesn't matter if I'm at 39 or 38. The important part is just that I have 40 or more. Yeah, another thing about getting burned is your move speed gets a lot faster and you it decreases your defense. So if you, for some parts, if you like have to carry the chalice, if you get burned, it's actually a lot faster to walk around. That was a very clean fight. I kind of like boxed them in at the edge. And yeah, ignoring ignoring the small goblins or whatever they are is uh, is pretty fast because like you can, they just cast and you just dodge it and you just triple hit the boss to death. All right, we're getting another letter here. Yeah, so from here, from here on out, he should be fine on artifacts, unless he gets a really high um, bonus points and the next could mess up the default. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm one short, but it's not the end of the world. 
Because the final dungeon is gonna be. That. Yeah, the the final dungeon is gonna be the relevant one. All right, gotta change to Earth, and then head to the next dungeon. Um, we're gonna skip the one you see on the bottom left because that is uh, abysmal to do. It is so incredibly slow that you never ever want to go in there unless you're doing all dungeons. One of the reasons why all dungeons is actually bad. Yes. I did like two runs of that, I don't know, it's it's not my thing. The extra dungeons are just not necessary if you ask me. Especially if because in, in single player you can't do the out of bounds glitch in, uh, in one of them. So that's kind of annoying. You're doing a multiplayer run and everyone is using a different race, it should be fine because inside the dungeon to open the doors you have to step on a switch that keeps changing. Depending, it shows the uh, crest of your of your tribe. So, if everyone has a different race, then it's going to open the door right away instead of having to wait. Yeah, it's still annoying though because of all the loading screens. You have to go in to the room, out of the room, into another room, out of another room, and so on and so on. It's just gonna take forever to get through it. Also. You might have noticed that the game is actually really laggy sometimes, which um, kind of sucks occasionally, especially if you want to time your triple hits. Like right there, while I was walking through the miasma, the game started lagging like crazy. But um, that's nothing compared to something you're going to see later. Alright, no encounter, that's good. Two encounters so far, not too bad. If I got a green beret, this run would have actually been really good so far, I think. Alright, I'm gonna grab this phoenix down. For safety again. How many am I at? Like... Seven now? Um... Six... Seven, I don't know. Something around that. Yeah. It should be plenty, but I just want to be on the safe side. That's why I'm getting a couple more. Get out of my way, stupid lizard. Oh, I'm not. It's not on there. But a lizard is. Yeah, he's standing on the switch. Oh, and then he moves off and away so that I drop the switch to damage. That's unlucky. <laughs> Right, as you can see, sometimes enemies cooperate, sometimes they don't. Um, more often than not, then more often than not, they don't, which is kind of annoying. And sometimes Moogle is your enemy in that regard. All right. So if you see me looking down, I'm looking at the map. Grab the next switch. Moogle got tired, that's why I was just running ahead of him. As Rom mentioned, he gets tired after a while, and if you're in a very hot area, like a desert, um, he go he's gonna get tired faster. Oh no. Also, I did actually pick up a plus two strength from the chest I opened earlier, so I'm back at 45. Which is uh, really convenient. Because, as mentioned before, f every mult every increment of five is a breakpoint that you want to hit. I still have to use one, though, because it would run out very soon. Alright, um, this boss is also pretty straightforward. Basically, all of the dungeon bosses are pretty straightforward. We're just gonna move up... ...and just hit him. Occasionally, we're gonna use meat to replenish our HP. Yeah, Nev doesn't have to worry that much since he has a really good armor for this part. Yeah, basically. 
Normally you're not supposed to be able to get the armor and the weapon that I have until I think year three is the earliest you can get it, right? Or yeah, can I think you? you can negate me through. Yeah, I don't I don't think you can get it in year two. I don't think it's possible. But yeah, um so basically if you would do a glitchless run or basically not use uh, infinite guild glitch, you would have to go into dungeons, kill enemies and hope that they drop the mithra that you need. And you will need spare drops so you can actually afford the recipes. Which is another thing. That's why glitchless is a very bad category if you ask me. It's even more RNG on the already existing RNG. Not a big fan of that. Alright, uh, that's a low one, so we're guaranteed an ice brand. So if I got a lot of points here, that's what Ron was talking earlier. Um, there could have been a chance that I got a higher tier of the artifacts, in which case I would have uh, missed out on that ice brand. Which uh, would be unfortunate. That can, also, that can also happen in Demon's Court, right? You get, uh, you get yeah. the artifact drawn uh, Kiwanda, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, you get a plus one. Up was on, okay. Which is even worse. <laughs> but yeah. Mm. Alright. As with the previous year, we spawn in the village. And we just want to get the heck out of here as fast as possible. So next is gonna be we have to change the element of Riverbell path because we have to pass here. Or we get an encounter. Yeah, there's the third encounter. Encounter <laughs> is like, hold up! Hold my beer. Oh no, it's, it's no. Luta. <laughs> this one uh, is this is the worst. one of the worst. Yeah. It's like one minute long. And all they do is come by and say hi. But don't worry, both World Record and Second Place had this encounter in their run. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it's a shame because in my PB, which is the record, uh, I only got one encounter. It was this one. It was so bad. Yeah, I got this one and four others. So, uh, yeah. It's a lot of time lost just to that, unfortunately. But it is what it is. It's not a whole lot you can do about it. Alright, we're changing to Wind, which now means we can't get stunned anymore by uh, lightning spells. Or thunder spells. Now, Nev is heading back to Mushroom Forest. So yes. he's going to do the dungeon again because uh, you can... Of course you can keep doing the dungeons over and over to grind to get artifacts and other items. But you can... Collect Mir three times, and whenever it's available again, the dungeon gets a little bit harder. Yes, it basically goes into the second cycle now. Uh, dungeons have three cycles maximum. Um, we're never going to see any of the third cycles in this one. So some people might be wondering why I didn't just do a uh, riverbelt path. Alright, that's four. Uh, oh my god. Oh, it's the next part of the loot encounter. Wait, was this the one with the item? I don't even remember. Or with the money? I could just mash through this, right? I don't think I've ever seen this in a run. Yeah, I haven't seen it e what? either. Ever. Might have just the bought something be... for 1,000 gil. It doesn't really matter. The thing to be concerned about the encounters here is because you get a memory for it, and at the end of the game, he's going to have to randomly answer uh, five questions regarding uh, your memories. So, if it's one That's... encounter that we have never seen before, it could affect the answer you have. Yes, we have a list with all, well, with, uh, with a good amount of them. But, like I said, if, if it's one that we've never had in a run, or like never really calculated for, then the uh, answer might not be on there. So, this guy has been a jerk the first time around already. 
Okay, so here is uh, here is hoping for a flame tongue. Let's, uh, let's channel our inner RNG, I guess, and uh, hope that we get a flame tongue in this chest. Because that would basically bring me back on pace for best possible strength, Ice Brand. That's not what we're looking for. It's good temporarily, but it's not what I'm looking for. I'm gonna equip a mead. I have so many finger stones. I think I can stop for now. Yeah, yeah. at least you'll be able to get a strength artifact from here, since you don't have man eater yet. Yeah, I can. But I could have gotten flame tongue here and get man eater and river belt two. I think river belt two has man eater instead of shuriken, right? No, it's uh, double X, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, right. You can actually get an Ice Brand in River Belt too. I got that the other day. All right, um, could go for the Kong. same procedure as last time. Uh, I, we killed the left planned. And then we just uh, triple hit the boss. You can see, especially when he casts slow, the game is really laggy and the triple hits are sometimes really annoying to time. Okay, didn't even have to heal. Perfect. Alright, um, after this we're gonna get a fixed encounter again, so, um, no time lost there. And then we're gonna go over to the other side of the river and explore some dungeons there. One of them is great, you literally just follow the way and then the boss is really easy, the other one is a nightmare. Because the other one, um, unfortunately, has randomly located enemies that carry keys and you need two of them. And there is, uh, I think it's four, sp it's four spawns, right? Is it four or five? I don't remember. I think it's five, you can get one on the left, and two would be... Two on, no, the, to four. Two on the top, one on the right, one on the left, yeah. Optimally, you want to get the one on the top left and then the one on the left because that's um, that's the route I'm taking. I go top left first. But um, no one my luck is probably going to be top right and left. Yeah, if you get the top left, I think it's the other one will always going to be on the left. At least that's what has happened to me so far. I don't think it's guaranteed though. I'm pretty sure I've got the top left and like something on the right side. I'm pretty sure I've also gotten like top left, top right before. All right, quick trip over. We're gonna skip this cutscene by mashing start, and here we are. That was a very fast boat trip. Mind if I jump in with a quick message? Yeah, sure. Uh, in about an hour, it's time for the Pokemon Black Any% run by Cosmolex, and he has some pretty interesting incentives that uh, you guys can donate for. You can donate for the trainer name in the run, and you can donate for the main Pokemon's nickname, Lillipop. So far, l the leading name for Lillipop is uh, Doggy with $130, so if you want it to be something else or support this name, you can always... Drop a quick donation and support a good course. And lastly, there's also a nickname for the legendary towards the end of the run, Reshiram, you can decide the nickname for. So uh, get those donations in and support a good course. Yeah, so do it, guys. Said, do it. Dungeon, dungeon is pretty straightforward and the boss fight. Uh, can do some damage, but there's a way to AI loop. And it's a good thing to have the wind element because he has these stupid jellyfish 
and you can get stunned with the normal attack anymore. So it's kind of good. Uh, the normal, their normal attack still stuns you. Just their uh, oh yeah, if you thunder hit spell them. doesn't. Yeah, if normally oh, if you okay. hit them and if you don't have wind, you'll get stunned. But if they hit you, you will get stunned regardless. Alright. Uh, I'm just gonna take my two seconds to kill him off right away. It's a little annoying. That's the attack it's to Ooh. use the AI, AI loop. Basically going back and forth and using the focus attack. When he's when the enemy gets really low on health, you do a really huge AoE attack. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> that wasn't too bad. I fumbled a little in the middle part, but it was still alright. I jumped in slightly too early, so like the the hitbox from his uh, from his like shaking the wall uh, extends a little bit out, and it lasts for a little bit. So like generally, hitboxes are very weird in this game. You'll see on the final boss. I think everybody who's run who's ran this game before can uh, can vouch for that. It's a nightmare. Yeah, it's one of the reasons it's a good idea to have extra Phoenix now. Don't Just because it's use magic. so it's so random. You simply get hit without being in range with the attack. Yeah. In fact, I've been to the opposite side of the map before, and I still got hit, which makes absolutely no sense. But yeah. So right here is another fixed encounter. Yes. Uh, I think if this is the first one that starts giving you hints how to get the um, unknown element. I don't know how to call it. Let's just call it holy for now, the holy yeah. element. It's basically a puzzle that's going to be in Binary Desert for year 5 that you have to solve to get the element. So you can actually get to the area of the West Dungeon. So yeah, there's the hint. It says something about a... about a, a cactor and a lightning. You get the second hint in year four, and I don't think you get the last hints until like later. But we don't need them because we already know it, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm not sure if you get all of them, do you? Because you get one here, one the next year, and third one should be when you leave the village. I don't think you get one there. But I mean, it doesn't really matter. Alright, this level is also a little laggy, you can see. Not running very fast yet. There we go. Alright, uh, top left. Let's go. If it's not top left, it's gonna be annoying. It is not top left. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open this chest here. Oh no, this is bad. Uh, I really, whoops, I really wanted that artifact because if it's a plus two, I go back up to uh, 50 as you might be able to see. All right. It is unfortunately not, it is a plus one. And there is the guy that we're looking for. I'll just have to drop aggro off of all these enemies first. So yeah, there's two switches, as you might have seen at the beginning, at the entrance. And we'll have to get both of them, unfortunately. The second one is on the right. So we know where it is, but getting that one is actually really annoying because there's like four enemies here. 
They don't really drop aggro. And there's the piggy here as well. It doesn't get better. Uh, I need Moogle to drop this because he got tired. So they're gonna run back, but they're still gonna be more or less in the way. At least he was kind enough to move all the way over here. And I should really just focus charge him. Alright, that wasn't too bad. So yeah, there's a, this level has a lot of RNG just with the, the key spawns. And yeah, not getting a plus two is a little annoying. It's not the end of the world. I'm gonna deal slightly less damage to the boss, but I think I'll I think I'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, uh, this boss is also a little annoying. There's three enemies here. Preferably, you don't want to kill him. Oh. But they oftentimes just end up dying anyways. Also, that is his worst move that he can do. Because it knocks you back like that, and there's very little you can do about it. So I'm just gonna heal up real quick. I do not understand how that hits me sometimes. It is perfect if he shields, because if he shields then you can just hit him from behind. That was all right. Could have been better, but this is this is probably one of my mer my worst fights, and I don't even know why because it's technically so simple. All right, and more letters, and the end of the year. Actually, I have to think about that for a second. So yeah, next up is gonna be we spawn back at the beginning, which is uh, convenient because we want to do the first dungeon again. What do you think? Do I go for... Do I go for the... what's it called? Oh, this, this might be bad. We might get a bad artifact here. Okay, no. We're good. Since we got a very high number of points, there was a chance that we get the second tier, which is only a plus one as opposed to a plus two. That's All also of one of the reasons why Yuki <clears throat> is kind of annoying to run, because on the first dungeon you have to rely on getting a good bonus condition, and not only that, you have to also get uh, the magic artifact that has a one-third chance of appearing. Mm. It's just overall pretty annoying. Like, Yuki in general is just... Uh... Let's call it bad. I think that's the most accurate term you can use. Like, they have a nice defendability because it makes you literally invincible, but you have to channel it. And um, other than that, they have nothing useful. Like, their magic is great, but unfortunately magic is uh, not that great in a speedrun. Because... Whenever you grab magic in a dungeon, it disappears after you leave the dungeon. So you have to get it back in every dungeon, unless you get, like, a ring for it. Like, for example, a blizzard ring that I had earlier in Via Luz Luz. Alright, this is definitely gonna be the last Phoenix Down that I pick up. Alright, Ron, what do you think? Griffin? Uh, yeah, it should be fine. I think you want 15 seconds. All right, let's do it. Where is he even? There. Come on, flame tongue. 
waste of time. Sometimes you're just gonna take the risks to try and get more strength, I guess. So, the crab is hopefully not going to be as annoying this time, but we'll see. Good thing now he has the mark to carry Chavis and the bad part is the enemy, uh, his bounds can actually stun them. So, whenever he, whenever he does something, he's going to attack you afterwards. But sometimes, he's just gonna jump away afterwards, which means that his attack is queued, like this. So you kinda know what he's gonna do, but at the same time, it's uh, sometimes really annoying. And whenever his armor breaks, he's, uh, he's not actually gonna attack you. Alright, that was not too bad. I guess. So yeah, I guess I'll just pick the defense artifact, be it 45, can't be one-shot by that very weird hitbox on the final boss. And I can't pick defense here, right? It's not a buckler. I don't even remember, it's been so long. But I don't think it's a buckler, is it? All right, deal damage. Guess we're at 44. Wait, wasn't it the strength artifact that you got available? No. That's weird. It was a Manny, uh... No, it wasn't. Like, because this is either a Maneater or a Shuriken, and I got both of them already. And the one I dropped from the Griffin was a Double Axe, and I already got that as well. Yeah, so you guys can see the struggle. You have to do the entire run, hoping to get RNG, the dungeons, and also outside. And there's, <laughs> there's number five. Just to get at the end, and... Still having to rely on getting uh, Masamune, which gives you 5 strength. Yep, another 25% chance. And preferably you want 2 of them. But yeah. But yeah, um, like I said, unless, unless I'm really blind, that artifact that I could get there was taken. Like I already had it, that's what I mean. 100% sure. Actually, now I'm not anymore since you asked me, <laughs> to be honest. But I think I think it was one that I already got. All right. Um, this time we can skip the the jail part here. A cage. That's the word I was looking for. I don't know why I said jail. So whenever you try to hit objects and there is an enemy in the way, your character auto. Uh, auto turns towards the enemy. That's why I couldn't hit the switch twice because the enemy was right next to it My character instead turned towards the enemy It is very prominent in the third dungeon that I did with the mine cards, but luckily that one went pretty smooth Alright, now I just gotta hope that this one works out. Because now I have to pick up the switch again. And you guys saw what kind of struggle it was earlier. Oh no. Everyone joined the party. Okay, there we go. 
It's easy if you get them all to sync up, but getting them all to sync up is really difficult. So yeah. Now these are gonna be slightly easier though, as you might be able to see. Okay, these might be somewhat synced up now. Okay. That is good enough. I'll take that. <laughs> So, this fight is gonna be a little less convenient now, though. Okay, I need him to cast. Because of these goblins, I'll have to... I'll have to kill him, more or less. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, now they are not synced, and that's the problem. And he just keeps teleporting around. Yeah, just because you have to aggro the enemies because of the melee uh, focus attack, this dungeon's so bad compared to the first cycle. He keeps doing it. I have to kill Takes this. so long that the enemies actually respawn there. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Now he's really just there to troll me. So yeah, that's, uh, that's an easy way to lose like 40 seconds or something. Just by the boss teleporting one after another, one after another. There's no end inside. Ah, man. It's okay, we're, we're still on an okay-ish pace so far. Got a lot of encounters early on, pretty front-loaded. So, as I shouldn't say it, but as long as we don't get too many now, we should be fine. Okay, we're at 49 base, 51 with meat. I have to change to earth, right? Yeah. I sometimes forget that. Okay, um, next event where we get a hint for the holy element. This one's annoying because it's long and you have to mash through a lot of text. This is the part where I really wish you could use a turbo controller. Oh well, actually... Is it the you have to pay for him? Yeah, you have the choice between either paying the thousand gil, it was a thousand, right? Or just uh, leaving him hanging. But we're real bros, so we're gonna give him a thousand gil to pay them. Actually, it's just faster. But I'm sure he would do the same thing for us, right? Yeah, I guess so. He's telling you how to beat the game after all. <laughs> Alright, so now we're gonna go to Mount Kilanda, which means we're gonna go for another boat ride. Yeah, eventually when he finishes Winari Desert, he will have the Holy Element, which allows you to go through any Miasma stream, where, where the element it is. Yeah, pretty much. It's almighty. It can do everything. Although it doesn't give any, um, any bonus stats, like resist to freeze or stuff like that. Yeah, that's the only downside. But not having to change every time is uh, a pretty good upside, if you ask me. And being able to go to the final dungeon. <laughs> Alright. Okay. 
Okay. It's also very expensive to go on this boat, right? 500 gil. For us, not a problem, because we did infinite gil glitch. And glitchless? Depending on how many Mithrids you get, could be really annoying. Because in, in glitchless, you're really starving for money. But yeah, conveniently enough, this is also going to be the third dungeon that we're doing this year, so we don't have to, like, sail back or anything. We'll just get teleported back to the village. Okay. The final boss, like the real final boss, is actually in this dungeon and it's coming up right now. And it is this pod. Because if you miss it, you'll either have to wait like two minutes or you need to die to respawn it. And the hitbox is really bad again. So yeah. That's basically all of the first area of this. Now we're just gonna hit this guy. He's gonna drop his sword. We'll follow him, and then he opens us the path to the final uh, to the boss of this uh, this thing. Moogle's gonna get tired right about now. Yep, there we go. Luckily, it doesn't matter too much because we wait for the bridge anyways. And then I think I am going to equip a mead, use a mead, and then we're just going to smack the boss. Boss is pretty simple. Um, you always just want to dodge counterclockwise, whatever he does. And you want to ignore all the ads. Oh yeah, I have plenty of Phoenix downs. <laughs> Holy crap. You also want to hope that he doesn't break his sword. Otherwise, there's a chance that he's going to leave the arena to get another one. Just have to wait until he's back. Ah, he broke it. first one didn't reach. That's unlucky. Alright, one cycle. That's great. That was a, that was a pretty clean fight. Aside from that one miss on the focus charge, which didn't actually end up mattering because I just had- I didn't have to do any extra focus charges. So yeah, um... Coming up next is gonna be year five, the final year of the run. So our objective, as mentioned multiple times, is to get the holy element now. So we're gonna go straight to Lunari Desert as soon as we have the chance. I don't take damage, I think I did very well on that. Get another plus two here, which puts us at 53 with meat. That's a healthy number. Assuming nothing goes wrong, we're going to be at 54 with mead, which is not optimal, but it could be way worse. Alright. The game's also going to recap on the hints that you get here. Which is kind of weird, because you only got two hints so far. And the, it would kind of require you to get five in order to actually get the element. So I don't actually know what the reason is that um, they recapped the thing here. So for year five, he's going to Inari and he doesn't need to beat the dungeon, he just needs to get to the element and then he's going to leave. One thing about Vinari is you can actually, you see, there's these areas uh, that you can press A and just enter them. And normally you can't really get an encounter there, but for Vinari is different. Yeah, you can, you can get, get an encounter, encounter in the town, basically, which is 
Really silly. Alright, have to press down. There we go. Because I like to just mash through this and then be asked if I want to go to Kilanda again, which I really don't. Also, funny thing about this uh, this town that we're going to, if you're not a sulky, the people living there are actually going to pickpocket you if you talk to them. Also, you can't do the you can't do the jumping mini game, which we're not going to do right now because we don't have time for that. But it's great, trust me. Do we have time for a quick message? Yeah, sure. Uh, you told me that this game is getting a remaster for the Switch. PS4, soon, right? iOS, and Android, yes. So, if anyone wants to, like, play this game on a Nintendo Switch, then uh, our sponsor, Kaspersky, has provided us with a Nintendo Switch that uh, you can get yourself in the raffle for if you donate $50 to the event. doesn't have to be a single-handed $50 donation. You can donate several times as long as you donate fifty dollars in total you will be in the raffle or if that's not in your budget you can also donate a total of thirty dollars and be in the raffle for a view sonic elite xg 270 qg a pretty nice looking monitor that will enhance your gaming experience of course provided by our, our sponsor view sonic all right so now nev's collecting a few uh, match sites that he's gonna need. So basically, he needs to cast uh, Thunder on a Cactus, then he has to use Gravity on a Tent. Uh, after that, he, use, <laughs> he needs to use Fire, uh, Mushroom Rock, and the fourth place is going to be Blizzard on three different rocks. And finally, he has to cast uh, Holy on a Flower to Unlock the element. And most importantly, I have to actually hit my focus charges. Because that was... that was terrible. So here you actually get to see the feature that allows you to fuse uh, spells. You could use it uh, without having to just pause and equip them. When you cast, you see the circle, you just have to combine them if you're playing on multiplayer or if Mog is ready to cast a spell as well. So yeah, just combine two damaging spells to basically make, uh, to make gravity. Uh, different combinations of different spells make different spells. But for this one, luckily we need fire right after, so equipping fire and it auto-fusing into gravity is really convenient. Uh, I just need to get away from here. And we'll unfuse this. Which is still convenient because we need blizzard after fire. Just pick it up, Mog. I'll believe in you. So, we're gonna cast fire on this thing. We're actually really low on HP. Normally I wouldn't do this, but... Uh, safety first, they tell me. So you can see Moogle slowing down, he was a little tired. He didn't give me a message because he picked up the the chalice halfway through his recovery phase, I guess, if you want to call it that. Alright, there's the three rocks here. And now we need holy. First of all, we need Moogle to not be tired. 
Alright, he doesn't carry it for very long, so we can just drop it back down. Whoops. And there is the flower. What? Alright, there we go. Now we have the holy element, and conveniently we can also just teleport out from here. Did not get an encounter in the town, that's also great. So now we're gonna head back all the way to Violus Luz, which is basically at the other end of the map. Because... Unfortunately, exactly in... Oh no, we don't want to go to Kilanda. Exactly in year 5, the river to the other side of the map dries up. What a coincidence, right? So we'll have to fix that by going all the way to Violus Luz and getting the water back. It's also a great opportunity to get a bunch of green counters. Oh yeah, because you have to walk across the entire map not once, but twice. Once would be half as bad, honestly, but twice? Disaster. So yeah, basically, in my PB, I had one encounter up to this point, and then I got four more. So... That's when my mood kind of suddenly just, you know, went bad. Because I had a really good run, and then everything just became bad. Because of RNG. But yeah, we don't have to switch elements anymore, so we can just go through all of them. How many have you gotten so far? Five? Um, I think it was five, yeah. Maybe chat remembers. Oh, actually chat can't tell us. <laughs> Let's just assume it's five. I'm pretty sure it is. Which is basically the same as my PB. Except I didn't play as safe in my PB. Didn't get as many Phoenix Downs. But assuming I don't do a big giant uh, fumble magic in the final dungeon and for the final bosses, it should still be a relatively decent run for a marathon. Although I guess with all these Phoenix Downs, I should be safe for Meteor Parasite. I think, uh, depending on what strength I get, I might still play relatively safe. Okay, only one more Miasma stream until we get to the dungeon, and we have to go through multiple more to go back. Yeah, so the dungeon is going to be slightly different. It's going to uh, grab a uh, life magic site so we can actually revive the flowers and make the water flow properly so we can get the keys this time. Yes. And then we're gonna get another plus one strength artifact, hopefully, if nothing interferes with that. And then we'll be at 54, which means... In theory, would like to see 11 from the final dungeon. But sometimes 11 is already a lot to ask for. So yeah. Okay, I need to not act- I need to not actually forget life. And I think I'm fine on Phoenix Downs, to be honest. So I have to grab that one.
I don't know how the second focus attack missed. Oops, got the placing there. That was a very weird one. Alright, so basically what's gonna happen now is we're gonna place the chalice on there. Actually, I don't think it's on actually, is it? Oh, it is. Oh no, he did actually snipe me. That's unfortunate. So one of the biggest enemies in this game is actually just picking up anything you need to pick up, like keys, while enemies are around. And one more, one more. Phoenix down, a meat, use a meat to heal to full, and then we're ready for the boss. Oh, I think I didn't switch off the Phoenix down, no. This is the worst attack you can do. Yeah, it's the same as the Wizard King spin attack. You kind of, you're kind of able to use defend, but it's really hard to time because when the animation finishes, you just take the hit again. Yeah. It's like it can hit you up to three times, I think, which is really annoying. Also guys, don't skip leg day, otherwise you're gonna look like this guy. With his tiny legs. And his massive upper body. Alright, that's the final letter we're gonna get. We got the river back to full. And now we're just gonna head to the final dungeon. Um, I need to. Sp I think I'll save in front of the final dungeon just in case. You never know. Wait, was the other one a plus two? It was. No. No, I think it was a plus one. Yeah, it was a plus one. Because you were still sitting at 54 with me. Yeah. Alright. This is another fixed encounter. And now we just gotta pray. So there's two more things we have to pray for. One of them is we won at least one Masamuna in the final dungeon. The other one is we want as few as counters until the final dungeon as possible. I'd love to take both, but if I can only get one, I'd rather take the Masamuna. Because Masamuna guarantees that I will hit 65 strength in any way, shape, or form. Because the final dungeon has four of each artifact and two random chests. That can be either nothing, the strongest 
defense artifact, the strongest magic artifact, or the strongest strength artifact. So it's a 1 in 4 chance to get what you want. So you're gonna try to reset once or twice? Uh, I'm like plus... 4 minutes behind. Yeah, I'm plus 430 on my own PB. I could do it. I could also just go for it. I don't know. I'll decide when I get there. I mean, even if I don't and only get 60 strength, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Like, 65 is obviously better, but 60 is enough. Like, the important part is just having a massless weapon there. Although, if I can't get 65, do you remember which of them are defense chests? Because I might just pick up a defense artifact to be at 49. Or however many they give. It's been a very long time since I had to pick up defense there. I know there's uh, one... Question. I know there's one on the way that I can't actually grab because I leave Mog behind. So I can't actually see anything. That's fine. We'll just get a Muscle Moon and then we don't have to worry about it. Muscle Moon puts me at 59, so I need plus 6 then. Plus 6 is doable. I'll have to grab all three other, well, three other ones though. So. Um, I don't know how accurate it is, but. Do you know the strength artifact to the right? It should yeah. be labeled as, I don't know if it's the chest B or A. Uh, oh, below the one. That the, yeah. Should be a defense artifact. Oh yeah, I think it actually is. I think it is. So if I don't get a... Uh, I think I'll reset once. If I don't get a Samunu on the second one, I'll grab that chest and just go for 60. Oh, whew. God bless five encounters. All right, um, remember when I was talking about lag earlier? There you go. I don't know what they were testing this on when they developed the game, but it can't be a GameCube, it can't be a Wii. Because this is absolutely terrible. And now we're off to the final dungeon. Like I said, I'm gonna save here real quick, just in case I somehow mess up. Because I may or may not have done the thing in the past where I accidentally went to the title screen after dying. That would be very terrible. Marathon safety. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up the first, the, the two random chests first, so we'll see what we get. Hopefully a Masamuna. Hopefully I don't accidentally pick up a ribbon again. Also there's these uh, rocks in the way that we have to get rid of. Oh hell yeah, let's go. Here we go, Masamuna number one. Oh, 
Oh boy, let's go! Masamuna number two! Okay, so you were at 54 with meat, right? I'm not even gonna check the rest. Oh, I went to the wrong path. Are you with 65? Oh wait, I have to check the other one. I was 64. Yeah, I'll just, uh, let's check this one. And I need two plus threes to get to 70. I could have just gambled on the bottom one. I just hoped that it was a plus three. Actually, no, it wouldn't even have mattered, right? Because I'm at 64 with meat. Yeah, no, I should have just gone. I should have just gone 65, let's go. I'll grab the other one anyways, just so I'm at 66. And I don't have to worry about uh, mead refilling strength. Another thing that we kind of forgot to mention is you can only carry four artifacts at a time. Oh yeah, that is absolutely correct. Otherwise, I would have just been able to get six strength artifacts in this dungeon, which uh, would be pretty broken. Okay, right. so this is gonna look a little bit weird for you guys in a second here. So what I'm gonna do is... I'm gonna equip the meat, equip the meat... Use the meat... I grab this one just so I don't have to refresh strength every time. Or meat rather for strength. It was a plus three, man. Alright, and then we're gonna do the thing. At this part he's just going to leave Mog behind. Use the map to navigate. So it's since the camera is going to focus on the chalice, you guys will have just to yeah. deal with so the reason getting stuck. The reason why I'm doing this is because whenever the chalice is too far away from your character, enemies aren't loaded. Neither are chests, but um, yeah. I'll have to heal once more. 69 strength, just like my PB. Oh wait. That is so unfortunate, man. 69 is the cursed number in this one. Because you could have gotten... I could have gotten 70 if I got a green beret. Remember? Yeah. Needed to kill that ogre. But perhaps if you, if you had gotten... Um... The green beret there range would be different, so who knows? Yeah. Alright, um, this boss fight is very long and part of it is very difficult. Well, not really very difficult, but it is just very long. Right now it's basically a boss rush. Yes. The only concerning part is the last one. But uh, there's a new strat that makes it a lot easier and safer. Yeah, I'll try it. I am by no means perfect at it because I didn't play this game for like a year and I just picked it up like after it was confirmed. Uh, I just picked it back up after it was confirmed to be in the marathon. So I didn't really have all that much time to practice that strat. First part is about to end. I think this is the West Cycle. Basically, move up and down to avoid the other enemies. Same goes for the second phase.
This part is also relatively easy. It's the last phase that's um, a little bit of a struggle. I just have to not jump too early. Problem is, these things take their sweet time to get out. But yeah, basically the strat is to just do this over and over. Now he's going to do this laser attack that you can seem to avoid by standing really close to him or really far. Yeah. Or you can stand on the hill and defend when it happens. If you're really brave. Also, you can get an extra hit in there after the focus attack, but I am just uh, playing it a little safe right now, so I'm not going for those. Because I've been having a lot of trouble with extra attacks recently. So safety first, again. This is pretty far into the run, and it would be a shame if something happened to it. Alright, the third phase is the difficult one. Because there is going to be a lot of random explosions and stuff. There's going to be two plants at the side. Which are technically not the problem. But the random explosions are because they are very, very random. And then the boss itself also targets those white explosions underneath you. So yeah, it's uh, pretty bad. Okay, it didn't get hit. Yeah, however, there's a strat. Which I will hopefully be able to do. So apparently there is a strat where you just stand here. And focus charge somewhere like... Here. Yeah, I can barely see the boss. Just hug the wall. And wait for the small explosions. So I can get free hits. As you can see, I'm not particularly amazing at it, and I keep missing. And I got sniped by the plant, which is fine. Because I'm just gonna equip another Phoenix down, and a meat. And I'll heal up to full, so the AoEs here don't actually kill me. So yeah, um, dying, dying to this, to this phase at least once is uh, no shame. Pretty natural, I would say. I can't really control it because when you go for the first attack, there's a chance that small explosions are going to hit you twice. So there's nothing you can do about it, even with the defend. Yeah. We're at the mercy of the game. Oh, I missed them both. That's bad. I missed one again. I'm really not good at going from that angle. And for the first hit, I think it's fine if you stand. Right, it doesn't matter. Uh, the middle. 
actually golded the split somehow. <laughs> I mean that was that was really fast. Double Masamuna. If I just if I just made up my mind and just went for that one chest like initial planned, it would have been even faster, but yeah. It could have been a plus three, I could have been at 70 strength, this fight could have been over like a minute faster. Lots of different things. But yeah, um... Now, there's gonna be... There's gonna be two enemies coming up, which are, believe it or not, incredibly difficult sometimes. Rom, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> They're the worst. Yeah, I gotta hope to hit them both at the same time. Otherwise, yes. uh, their attacks won't be synced anymore, and it's going to be trouble. As soon as they desync, it's uh, it's bad news. I also have to make sure I don't actually softlock the game here, because that's a possibility. If you mash too fast at some point, there is a chance to softlock the game, because the game doesn't know what to do anymore. For some odd reason. Alright, I also have to bring up my... Answers for the quiz. And hopefully I don't get the weird Luda one that I, um... That might not be on here. I think we have seen that before. If I'm not mistaken, we, we were checking the answers of Luda encounters. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the second answer. I'm almost sure. It might be, I don't know. Let's hope it doesn't appear right. That sounds like the better plan if you ask me. <laughs> okay, if it is the sec if it is the one, then I'll just pick second and um Yeah. I don't think it's on the list. Because I'm pretty sure when I made this list initially, um I never got that encounter. Doesn't really matter. We'll uh, we'll get there eventually. All right, switch to defend. All right, the most difficult non-boss fight in the game. Okay, this is a okay. Okay, I'm I'm gonna be really far away from the swing. I don't want a soft lock. Okay, because if you mash B too early there, the game's confused because you just got out of the dialogue and then you try to talk to her and then you soft lock. It is really weird. But yeah, so now there's gonna be um, there's gonna be five. Five questions that I'm being asked about our journey. And I'll have to answer them correctly. Otherwise, I will lose the memory and I will have to fight two enemies. The more you get wrong, and the later on you get them wrong, the more quote unquote stronger enemies you get. Although the later ones are kind of easier sometimes. But yeah. Alright, here's number one. Uh... Actually, I could have just read that. <laughs> I was looking for the thing because I was unsure. That was bottom left. Alright. So whenever you start running this game, um, it's not just, or like, even if you would do this in English, it's not necessarily the problem that you can't read in Japanese, because depending on how much attention you pay, you might not even know the answer to the English question. So, uh, yeah. 
That was my problem at the beginning. I just didn't pay any attention to any of the plot. When I started running this. So even if I could have read it, I would have had no idea about the answer. Uh, that's the second. Yeah, nothing much going on so far. Yeah. We basically got here at year five. You don't even know what's going on regarding the story of the game. Yeah, I'm just focused looking at a picture with all the answers. So yeah, um, was that a third one? I think that was the third one, right? Yeah, it was the third one. So two more. And then there's gonna be another like minute of text or something, maybe a minute and a half, and then there's a boss, and then there is um, a minute of cutscene and text, and then there's the final boss. So we're nearing the end. And I have 65 strength. Should I should I go for the for the one cycle strat? Yeah, you have a bunch of Phoenix downs anyway. Uh Alright, I didn't even have to look that one up. Yeah, I think I'll I think I'll give it a try. I have like what seven six Phoenix down? Seven? It's more than enough. Yeah, for the last boss, usually you you would hope for 70 strength so you can just one cycle him, even though it's not guaranteed. But there is a strat now that uh, makes one cycle with 6 to 5 a lot more consistent, although it still relies on the enemy's movement. Yes, and... It is not super difficult, but it is it does require a decent amount of practice, I would say. Because you have very tight timing windows during that strat. Okay, what is it? Uh... The first one. Oh yeah, it is. I went from the bottom right to the top left. <laughs> and guess what? It was the very first... The very first image. Alright, uh, so much for this. It's just a quiz to show how the memories play a huge role for this game. There are two beings, one of them just uh, completely eat uh, the villagers' memories, just like it was happening with the Black Knight, and this other one just cause, uh, just makes uh, you forget small things, nothing major. And at the end, both of them will fuse and your memories will start appearing and it will try to devour it. So if you have cure, you can save your memory and it will give you a mighty sight that could give you a shield that blocks all of the enemy's attacks for some time. But we don't use that here because it simply makes the fight a lot harder. More RNG dependent and it's really slow to actually get cure in the last dungeon. Yeah. And there's another thing, since you start losing memories because of the boss, uh, I, I don't remember, I think it's, if you get below 8 memories... I think it's 10. would get 10? Yeah, I'm not sure. If you get below a certain amount of memories, you would get a game over if you die. 
So this is a lot of text that you have to mash through, and this is another part where I would really love a turbo controller and uh, the ability to actually use one in a run. <laughs> We're almost through it. So um, this fight is not super difficult. In fact, it's probably one of the easiest bosses, I would say. Yeah, here basically Nev is going to AI without aggroing the other enemies, and that's basically the fight. After a while, he starts using this laser attack, which gives you a perfect oh. opportunity for a focus attack. That is, uh, that is the second to last boss, and that's the final boss coming up. Let's just pray to God that I don't get stupid wonky hitboxes. Or not too many of them. What do you think? Should I even attempt to dodge him, or should I just take him if I get him? Uh, just take the hit. It's not like it's going to hit you 100% of the time anyway. Yeah, pretty much. All right. I think it's worth trying to use defend if you have like... If I just finish the combo. Note. Or if I just finish the combo, I guess, and it's coming up. Uh... I really wish I had 45 defense right now, because then I would just live through. <laughs> But oh well, oh well. So this boss first phase you basically have to attack its legs, let's say. And basically first phase is a target dummy, second phase is really annoying. Yeah. And here's another display of Selkie's uh defense ability. Because there's one uh laser that he does that you can Simply use defend, and if you were using a, another race other than Yuke, you'd have to run away because the area of effect is really huge. Yeah, it's gigantic. And it's also really difficult to actually get out of it if you're in the middle of a combo. So yeah, you have to hit that thingy magic down there. Whatever it is, you all have to hit it until he drops down. And then we'll see what happens. We'll see how consistent I am after all in this uh, one cycle strat. Yeah, there's the attack, but since he was really far back, he didn't, he didn't need, need to use the fan. So this attack here kind of destroys the memories. And here comes the body swing that can hit you from really far away for no reason. That's why he's using the fan there. It 
So for the one cycle strat, you basically want to try to chain as many attacks as you can as fast as possible. What? How did that hit me though? And if you take, if you die uh, during that phase, it basically resets. So it's really unfortunate. I just don't actually know how that hit me. Okay, attempt number two. Yeah, I think it's better just to do one or two hits. I'll just do the other strat. It is uh, much more comfortable for me. I really wanted to show off that strat properly, but yeah. I guess I just didn't practice it enough. So instead, I'll just do my good old run to the side strat. And just two cycle. Oh, well, I, I guess at this point, it's already a three cycle. <laughs> I do have a Phoenix Center equipped, right? Okay. Yeah... I mean, the first one was weird, because I was charging my focus attack like you're supposed to, and I still got hit. So that hitbox might have been wonky, but the second one was simply because I messed up the triple hit. And then what happened is, me starting the first, uh, the first attack from my combo again, uh, changed my hitbox so that the laser actually hit me. And, um, yeah, that's how I died, but oh well. Anyways, we're just gonna have a bunch of dialogue coming up, and then we're gonna smack me to your parasite in the face, and uh, that's when it's gonna be time. So, uh, yeah, I think, like, a little bit less than two minutes here. So this might be a 203, maybe low 205, uh, 204. Okay, it's unfortunate about that uh, one cycle strat. Yeah, but it's a really good run for a marathon. Yeah, less. definitely. <laughs> it went way better than expected, to be honest. First try, Master's Weapon, uh, only, double Master's Money. And only five encounters. So yeah, that was pretty good. Oh, actually this might be really close for a 203. I think it's gonna be a 204. Or is it? I think this is like 30 seconds as soon as you see the thing. Ah, oh, this could be really close, but we'll see. So yeah, um, time is whenever I hit the thing, so um, it's gonna be very soon.
Yeah, no, it's a 204. Unlucky. And... Time. Whew. I think that was... That was overall a pretty good run, I would say. Little... Couple hiccups here and there, and I lost... I lost a lot of time just from picking up all these Phoenix Downs, which I didn't end up needing in the end. But I'd rather have them than need them in the end, so... There's that. But yeah, um, that was Crystal Chronicles in uh, just over two hours. Which for old standards would have been an insane time if you think about it. <laughs> But yeah, that was it. I hope everybody enjoyed the run, and um, I hope everybody is looking forward for the remaster. Um, remember August 27th? Uh, you can cross-play, and there is even going to be like a free trial version that they announced. Um, I think you can play the first three dungeons with that, and I guess then you can also still decide if you actually want to buy the game or not. Um, if you get invited by, like, if you play it online, if you get invited by someone who has the full game, you can play, uh, I think, up to 13 dungeons or something like that. So, uh, it is pretty good. Um, if you've never played the game, I'd say give it a try. It's great. But yeah, um, like I said, that's it. Uh, that's Crystal Chronicles. Um, thanks for having me. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope you guys enjoyed this room. And thanks a lot to Romulus for uh, co-commentating this with me. Uh, you should check him out as well. He, I think you do a lot of like variety speedruns more or less, right? Yeah, thanks for having me. Yep, thanks for being here. <laughs>